Hello gamers, I'm NKCO and in this video we are going to explore a sad topic, at least for me. Gloria Victis, a PvP focused MMORPG, is going to shut down at the end of October. It's always sad to see any MMORPG shut down, regardless if I enjoy it or not. As someone that loves MMOs, I want to see as much variety and competition in this genre. However, in my opinion, this MMO was destined to fail and it is a miracle and a testament to the dedication the devs had for this project that it has been kept online for 11 years, despite the almost complete lack of interest from players. I don't want to just share the news of this closure, instead I want to use this video as a delivery method to discuss why this was inevitable and why, when you see projects that make similar promises, you should think twice before spending your money on them. And more importantly, be aware of the fact that you are putting your precious time into something that will inevitably fail. This is not an isolated case. The list of PvP-focused MMOs that promised and failed to deliver a similar experience is pretty long. But some popular examples will be Life is Feudal MMO and Mortal Online 2. Before we talk about all the reasons why this is inevitable, we need to address what I am referring to when I say PvP-focused MMORPGs. These are MMORPGs where the development team focuses over 50% of their resources on the PvP aspect. And as a result of this, the vast majority of features and systems present in-game will be PvP-focused. This should not be confused with MMORPGs like BDO an MMO that provides a wide variety of PvP activities. I would even go as far as saying it provides the most avenues for PvP in any MMORPG, and despite that, it is mostly a PvE MMO. And the vast majority of development resources are used to further and improve the PvE content of the game. To give a rough estimate, the PvP content in BDO only adds up to less than 5% of the content available. Alright, with that out of the way, let's talk about the reasons why these PvP-focused MMORPGs are doomed to fail. The first reason, and the biggest reason, is full or partial loot. This is a feature that allows for the individual or individuals that are victorious in a fight to claim equipment from the loser. Almost all these MMOs have this feature in some capacity, and more often than not, the game is built around this feature. On paper, this sounds like a very attractive feature, raising the stakes of any fight. Having massive consequences for every fight brings extreme highs and lows to the game, something that you might never experience in a game without it. This is the main reason that most people that try these games out do so, because in an ideal scenario, with no problems, this can create some of the most amazing memories you'll ever have in a game. It is my opinion, one of the reasons games like Dark and Darker have seen so much success. Sadly, in practice, in an MMORPG environment, this has a massive domino effect and raises all the things that are wrong with MMOs to new heights. Winning literally means everything in a system like this, and there is a lot to cover here, so please bear with me. Pay to win. There is no game where pay to win is as impactful as in MMORPGs will full or partial loot. That's a fact. And maybe you start up one of these games and take a look at the cash shop and you don't see any pay to win and you might assume that is fine. But it is not. Let's take a look at a game like Mortal Online 2. A quick Google search will reveal gold as well as items being sold for hundreds or even thousands of dollars. And this is a very small and niche game that is barely alive. Having such prices means there is a demand, even in an almost dead game. And the problem just becomes worse and worse as one of these MMOs gains popularity. For example, a game like Albion Online sees millions of silver being traded for money every single day. Top traders making tens or even hundreds of thousands monthly. Games like this are a real money trader's paradise. This also encourages actual players of the game to real money trade, and I will use Albion as an example again. A lot of top guilds in the game are known for real money trading. When you end up stacking tens or hundreds of thousands worth of valuable items and currencies, 
it becomes hard to resist making a great life for yourself outside the game, especially when these items or currencies are just gathering dust in storage. After all, you can just sell them and then go around and get them back from the very people that bought them and repeat the cycle, kinda like an infinite money exploit. And you might say that is okay, because the people losing money on this are the ones real money trading. Sadly, the people suffering the most from this are neither the ones real money trading or the ones buying, but the people making those items, which in general are just normal players of the game. The whole system is built on the back of normal players and they are the ones losing here. When developers create systems that enable and encourage real money trading, it also breeds scammers. We can look at a game like RuneScape, where scammers have been making a living out of scamming people for years, with some of them even having videos showing off hundreds of thousands made from this. Of course, in the worst case scenario, these games are also free to play, which also ends up with bots overrunning the game simply to enable real money traders to make money easily. But this is not all. If by some miracle the game would be buy to play and would be subscription based and would also require real life identification to make an account so it would limit all these money trading scumbags, they would still not be gone completely because real money trading will never disappear, but its impact could be reduced and even in this case there are still some other real problems that a full or partial loot creates in an MMORPG. This is one of the most limiting design features that can ever be applied to an MMORPG. These are games that are built around progression. Think about the most amazing piece of equipment you have ever seen in an MMORPG. Well, that cannot exist in full loot MMORPGs, because let's face it, nobody is going to spend months of their life creating something that will be lost the second they die. It removes that feeling of progression that feeling of achieving something amazing in this MMO world, like getting legendary equipment in Guild Wars 2 or pen accessories in BDO, or back in the day getting Thunder Fury in WoW. So developers are pushed into creating bland gear that is usually easily replaced. This works great in extraction or survival games because it ensures you can easily join back the action without much time investment. However, in an MMO it strips away the progression and leaves you in a game without one of the most defining elements of the genre. All this if the developers have any idea of what they're doing. If they don't, they might attempt to create other progression avenues. Which brings us to the next problem, and that is balance. You cannot expect any semblance of balance in these MMORPGs. Not only the game itself will not be inducing of balance, but because winning means everything, the vast majority of people will go for the most effective strategy, regardless of the fun factor. If you don't enjoy whatever the meta is built around, this will strip away the fun from your experience. You will be more or less forced to play whatever is most powerful. Full or partial loot also offers people a direct way to limit another person's progression, while they also receive benefits and it will push people into simply griefing new players. This breeds an environment where people killing each other on sight is not only an option, but all there is to the game and of course the infamous gatekeeping. Gatekeeping is the best option to maintain your power, stopping anyone else from progressing to your level. We often see people that gatekeep as complete assholes, but the truth is, it's not their fault when the game is constantly pushing them towards doing this. To supposedly fix this issue, some of these developers will create zones where newbies cannot be killed or do not drop items, basically creating PvE zones, hoping they can hook people on the game before they meet the same fate as before. But this does not solve the problem, it just pushes it further down the line, on top of that, it just ends up making it worse, because the moment they step into the real game, they have more to lose, and it gives even more incentive for people that are ahead of them to come back and kill them, because the benefits will be greater. If the vast majority of the game is PvE zones that offer a place for people to play, then the game becomes a mostly PvE game. It is no longer a PvP-focused game. Think RuneScape, for example. It does have zones with full loot, but those are a very small fraction of the game and something most people don't interact with. 
they have excellent PvE options and the vast majority of their development focuses on PvE. The problem here is when developers remain PvP focused, like it happened with Gloria Victis. They created some PvE zones and PvE elements, but because they didn't have any passion for it and saw it just as fodder zones, the PvE elements in the game are atrociously bad. The quests, for example, are some of the worst you can ever see in an MMORPG. The same can be said about other games like this. Most of the time, they don't even have these zones, and when they do, there is no real focus on providing a quality experience. I know this is a long video, but there's more. The games often enough claim that all these problems will be mitigated by the skill-based combat, and that people with skill will be able to make up for any of these problems. However, that again is only true on paper. In the end, these games become extremely gear and build focused. They also often offer an action-based combat that requires precise aiming for most attacks. This is really cool in itself. But when everything is on the line and every mistake matters, this also pushes people to cheat or exploit everything they can. We can take a look at Tarkov, a game that doesn't have stakes as high as they would be in an MMORPG, and yet, according to some in-depth analysis, about 1 in 3 people are cheating. There are plenty of people covering this if you are interested to know more, but cheating has become so widespread that cheaters even have friendly signals they send each other to communicate they will avoid each other and only hunt non-cheating players. For all these reasons, you can only end up expecting your experience to be ruined if you are a legitimate player, someone that just wants to play the game the way it was intended and have some fun. Of course, there will be soy boys that want to play these games only because of these issues, but let's face it, nobody should care about people that only seek to find joy from abusing others and this video is not for them. There are many more other issues I can bring up, but this video is getting too long and I think this is enough to show why a PvP focused MMORPG is not something that should exist. And there is absolutely no reason to play one of these games over other genres like extraction or survival games, or even other PvP focused games, that will provide the same experience with these problems either mitigated or non-existent at all. Of course, everyone is free to do what they think is best with their time and money, but you should always be aware of these problems before you commit to such a game. As I said in the beginning, this is a sad topic for me, because I want to have more great games like BDO that offer considerable avenues for PvP. But all these incompetent developers just keep making the wrong choices over and over again. Hopefully in the future, developers will learn from these mistakes and do better. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Feel free to like and subscribe, or don't. See you in the next one, gamers!